In this video, I'll be making no-bake strawberry shortcake ice cream bars. I used to always buy these from the ice cream truck when I was younger, and this recipe has those similar flavors that I loved growing up. And hopefully, if I edit to this video in time, I'll be releasing it on January 14th, which happens to also be National Strawberry Ice Cream Day. To start, we're gonna need one regular size bag of golden Oreos. To make the crust, you'll need to use two rows, which is about 24 Oreos. This is also about how many I would normally take to the face in a single sitting. Toss them into a food processor and then pop on the lid. And then pop on the lid. Pop on the lid and then grind them until they are a nice, fine sand-like consistency. It should look something like this. Next, I'm gonna run the food processor again and slowly add in four tablespoons of melted butter. This should change the texture a little, like a wet sand, so you can make a sand castle. Next, I'm gonna add parchment paper to a nine by nine square baking tin. I left some extra long parts on the sides and I'll show you why I did that later. Add your sand to the pan and evenly spread it out along the bottom. Find something in your house that's flat so that you can press it into the pan. I found this burger smasher and I put some parchment paper down because I was worried that the cookie sand was going to stick to the smasher. I ran into a problem using a round thing to pack in a square pan, so I found this heavy duty spatula and that worked pretty good. It worked even better when I used them both together. Once you're happy with your packing job, toss this sucker in the freezer for about 30 minutes to set. I'll be using two ice creams for this recipe. Obviously one's gonna be strawberry, but this particular brand is a local company here in Hawaii and my friend John John works there and he gave me some for free. So I thought I'd make them a video. The other flavor is milk and cereal and I've never had this before and I would normally use vanilla, but Sage doesn't make basic flavors. After your crust sets, add one pint of the vanilla ice cream to the pan and do your best to spread it out evenly. I let the ice cream sit in the refrigerator the entire time I made the crust and you can maybe let it sit out on the counter for 15 minutes to let it melt a little to help it spread. I ended up adding a second pint because I felt that the layer was too thin with just one. Pop this in the freezer again for another 20 to 30 minutes and let this set. Make sure you do not skip this step. Next, I'll add the strawberry ice cream. And again, I'll do my best to evenly spread this out into the pan. This offset spatula really helps with this. And if you don't have one, I'd highly recommend investing in one. They're like 10 bucks and uh, I got a link to them in the description. Then go ahead and pop this back in the freezer for 30 minutes or overnight like I did because I got lazy from drinking. So the next day I put the same clothes back on to make it seem like it was the same day and I broke the final row of cookies in the food processor to make that crunchy crumb topping. I didn't want these to come out as fine as sand so I just kind of pulsed the processor till I got a bigger crumb consistency like this. There was some cookie dust at the bottom and I was worried that it might not look nice on top of the ice cream so I used a strainer to sift out the finer cookie crumbs from the bigger ones. You totally don't have to do this, and I honestly didn't even mean to show you this, but I did it anyways. Here's what was left, and I transferred that into a deli container to hold for a little while I worked on the next thing, which was the freeze-dried strawberries. I got this bag from Target, and I think you can also find these at Whole Foods or Safeway. It's in the section with like the granola and stuff. I threw about this much into the food processor and once I hit the button, it immediately started turning into dust. I kind of freaked out and I'm trying to think of how I could crush these up. We don't own Ziploc bags, but I was able to find a used one that we probably had in the back of the drawer for a few years. And I threw everything into that and then got as much air out as possible before sealing it. I used a meat tenderizer to pound the strawberries. Then I used the spiky side and it worked a little bit better, but then it started punching holes in the bag that we owned and I guess we can't reuse this one anymore. There was a lot of dust in here and again, I was worried it wasn't going to give me that look I wanted. So again, I grabbed the sifter, which I threw in the sink and it was freaking wet and I whipped it around the kitchen a few times and then sifted as much of the powder out as I could. This stuff smelled amazing and even editing this video right now, I feel like I could totally smell it. I'd honestly do a line of that powder. Anyways, I set that to the side and I brought the ice cream pan back out and I started topping it with the cookie crumbs first. If you really wanted to, you could have done this immediately after spreading the top layer of ice cream. But remember, I was lazy and I didn't want to film me making the toppings the first day of the shoot, because why? 
Next, I went ahead and added the strawberries on top as well, and I did my best to evenly distribute this into the pan. <laughs> I, I can't tell you enough how amazing this stuff smells. Because the ice cream was sort of rock hard from being in the freezer overnight, I took some parchment paper and that spatula and sort of pressed the toppings into the ice cream to help make them stick. I threw this back in the freezer for a little while I cleaned the kitchen and did my hair and makeup for the part where I'm going to eat it on camera. When you're ready to pull it from the pan, you want to take a knife and run it along the side without the parchment paper. Maybe don't use a knife because you'll scratch your pan. I added a few extra inches of parchment paper onto the sides to help me lift the cake from the pan, and then I placed it on a cutting board. I used a long brisket slicing knife to cut this cake into bars. I cut it four times one way and then four times the other way. And here's a nice cross section shot of the ice cream bar slash cake. I replated them on this thing for a pretty thumbnail shot. And now that they're melting in my kitchen, let's go in for a bite. I already know it's going to be good because the ice cream is hella good. Holy shit. It doesn't taste like the one you can buy from the store, but it definitely tastes better. <laughs> ah! Oh! 